So let's start this question. We have already discussed a 50 marks question with professional marks yesterday. In today's class, we will discuss this question and then we will compare how the examiner will mark this exam and how examiner has marked the, the scripts of three candidates. So I have specifically chosen this question because examiner has written an article in which he has specifically mentioned that how he will award you the marks and how he has awarded three candidates separately. Obviously one candidate with the, uh, with the very worst exam and one candidate with the very best exam. So that's why I have chosen this question. Although you people may have solved this question before, but why the purpose of solving today is just to have a practice that how to achieve the professional skills marks spe specifically in 25 marks question. So the requirement is, I told you in the yesterday class that this professional skill marks are, are a blessing for you people. Now, the chances of passing the exam is much, um, the chances of passing the exam are much better compared to the previous attempts. Like, evaluate the suitability of the investment proposal in Canvia, including the impact of the country risk premium on the NPV of the project. So we will evaluate the investment in Canvia, including the impact of the country risk premium. It, it, it will be given that question on the NPV of the project, 14 marks. B part, discuss the validity of the CEO reasons for adjusting the discount rate used in appraising the project in Canvia. So there will be some remarks about the CEO, about the discount rate. We have to discuss. Discuss means we have to discuss by writing the pros and cons. We have to write the points in favor in an, in, and in against the chief executive reason. Professional marks will be awarded for the demonstration of skills and analysis, skepticism and commercial acumen in your answer. I explained in yesterday class in 50 marks question, all of the four professional skills will be tested and majority marks will be awarded to the communication skills. But in question number two and three, the three professional Skills will be tested, analysis, skepticism, and commercial acumen. How you will get the analysis marks? If you have done the calculation in explained and in a clear way, you will get maximum marks in analysis. Because in analysis, you need the support of the numerical. So if you have done the numerical clearly, you can, if you write a few, very few lines, you will be able to get the analysis marks. Skepticism in skepticism, you should challenge the information given the question. And in commercial acumen, you should discuss the commercial viability of the projects. Okay, let, let's, let's solve the question first, then we will discuss it. So the first exhibit is, Colvin Company is based in the Eurozone region and was established 10 years ago to manufacture competition standards, standard bicycles for professional road racers. When the company obtained a listing five years ago, the founder retained a small minority shareholding. The remaining shares are held by a number of institutional investors. You should highlight two points here. Company is based in the Eurozone. So company is based in stable economic environment in Eurozone. Obviously, if the company is operating in Eurozone, that means um, that country is a, must be a stable country. And majority investors are institutional investors. Do you know who are the institutional investors? There are two types of investors, individual and the institution. Individual investors are like us. If we invest in a company, we are the individual investors. 
And normally, individual investors are not well diversified. But institutional investors are well diversified. Institutional investors have already diversified their investment by investing in many companies. So whenever there's a word institutional investors appear in exam, there should be uh, one point should arise in your mind that institutional investors are those investors which already have diversified the wealth of their investors. So institutional investors, if institutional investors are in your are investing in your company and, and your company is diversifying, it will not give benefit to the institutional investors. Why? Because they have already diversified their wealth. It will not give them the benefit. Okay, second para, board recently decided to expand the range of models and to look for new growth opportunities abroad. While manufacturing is currently restricted to the Eurozone, the board of directors has identified Canvia as a key growth market and is considering a potential investment project to manufacture and sell a new model there. This board establishing a subsidiary in Canvia. So your Colvin company is in the Eurozone and you want to invest in Canvia. Canvia must be another country where you want to establish a subsidiary. So you are moving out of the Eurozone. You are moving out of the comfort zone. You are moving out of the stable economic environment and moving to the Canvia. The currency in Canvia is the Canvia Lira. Canvia and Lira. By the way, practically, Lira is the currency of Turkey. And the current exchange rate is 9.91 Lira per Euro. <laughs> Annual rate of inflation in Canvia is expected to remain at 10% throughout the four years. So the annual inflation rate is 10%. Finance director estimates the project sales volume, inflation adjusted, inflation adjusted. It is already inflation adjusted. Pre-tax contribution and fixed cost. Sales is given, pre-tax contribution is given, fixed cost is given. The project will require an immediate investment of 75 million lira in land and building, 700 million in plant and machinery. Tax allowable depreciation is available on a plant and machinery on a straight line basis at 25% cost. Colvin Company Finance Director believes that plant and machinery have a zero residual value at the end of four years. The land and building will be disposed of at the end of the project and their tax exempt value tax exempt value is expected to increase at annual rate of 30% throughout the four year life of the investment. So here, professional skepticism and commercial acumen, both point will arise. You should discuss the assumptions why the capital gain is tax exempt. And if today is this tax exam, what will happen after four years? Will it still be a tax exempt gain after four years? And why the land value is increasing by 30% throughout the life of the investment? You, you should raise the question on this information. You will get marks on skepticism. It is that easy, seriously. The project will also require an immediate investment in working capital. 25 million. Annual working capital requirements are given. Incremental requirements. So, 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 so that means working capital changes are given. Working capital will be released back in full at the end of the project. Colvin Company is a policy of extracting remittable cash flows as dividend at the earliest possible opportunity. So all component for the new... You, you, you should raise a point here. If... The Canvia country, uh, for example, if Canvian company goes into trouble, they can stop the remittance and you can face the remittance blockage from that country. Because whenever you invest in another country and if you're investing in a country which is not stable compared to your country, so you can face the risk of remittance blockage. All components for the new bicycle will be produced or purchased in Canvia except for a gearing system component which will be manufactured by Colvin Company in the Eurozone. 
the cost of acquiring this component from the eurozone is already included in the pre-tax contribution based on a transfer price of 10 euro per component. Finance director estimates a manufacturing cost of 2 euro per component. Both the transfer price and manufacturing costs are expected to increase in line with eurozone annual inflation of 4% in the first two years and then 2% in year 3 and 4. Copper taxes can be as 25%. Companies are allowed to carry forward losses to offset against future trading profit. Colvin company pay copper tax in its home country annual rate of 20%. Taxes are payable in both countries. In the year the liability arises, a bilateral tax treaty exists between the two countries which permits the offset of the overseas tax against any domestic tax liability incurred on overseas earnings. Last one is a discount rate. The board proposes financing the project with a mix of equity and debt in such a way that existing capital structure remains unchanged. So this first line is suggesting that financial risk of the company will remain safe. For the purpose of this project, the CEO believes that weighted average cost of capital of 13% should be adjusted to include a country risk premium on the basis that Canvia is a developing economy and appears to be economically less stable than the Eurozone countries. He made this decision after consulting a country risk index, which compares the standard deviation of market returns in various countries. Maybe you heard of standard deviation of, of you, you have heard the word standard deviation. Standard deviation of market returns means if the market of, if the stock market or the bond market of any country is volatile. For example, for example, this is USA or Eurozone. This is Canberra. The return of stock market in Euro and return of stock market in Canvia. In Eurozone, return of stock market is, for example, stable. But in your country, it is highly volatile. If the volatility of the return of stock market is greater, that means your standard deviation will be higher. So that means your company, standard deviation, standard deviation means simply means risk, total risk. So if the stock market or the bond market is volatile, that means your stock market and bond market is risky compared to the stable economy. So that's why we will require a more premium according to the director here. So she made this decision. She increases the weighted average cost of capital from 13%. Why? She made this decision after consulting a country risk index, which compared the standard deviation of market return in various countries. Which compared the standard, standard deviation means risk, volatility of market returns in various countries. So he must have compared the risk of the stable country and the instable country. Obviously, the risk of the instable country will be greater than the stable country. Additional factors into consideration include foreign exchange risk, the fact that there have been a frequent changes of government, hence economic policies in Kenya. You have therefore been asked to use a discount rate of 16% to appraise this investment appraisal project. So we will discuss this last exhibit in the second part. First of all, let, let's calculate it. Let me open the spreadsheet. So guys, what should be the starting point? Sales volume or pre-tax contribution? What should be the starting point? What should be the starting point? No sales is given. No variable cost is given. Directly contribution is given. So let's start our calculation from the contribution.
part A. NPV of project N can be. So round off in millions. This is Kenmuel Lira. Years. So starting point will be pre-tax contribution. Pre-tax contribution. It is 419.4, Obviously, after the after writing the contribution, we must we should deduct the fixed cost. And fixed cost is already inflated. 270, 291.6, 314.9, Any other expense which you want to deduct? Anyone? Any other expense which you want to deduct? What are the, what are the other expenses? Tax allowable depreciation. Or nexus. The component, the gearing system. By the way, gearing system cost is already included in the contribution. So what expense will you deduct? Here. What is the other expense? Normally, we write sales minus variable cost. So, net of sale and variable cost is given that is contribution. Then we normally deduct fixed cost. We have already done that. Then we deduct depreciation. Okay. We will deduct the depreciation. And what else? All other costs has already been included. So, deduct the depreciation. The appreciation is available on the machinery on a 25% straight line basis. Machinery cost is 700. Tax allowable depreciation. 700 minus zero into 25%, 175. As it is a straight line method, it will be same in every year. Okay. It will be same in every year. Then we will calculate the profit. Why we haven't deducted the gearing cost, uh, uh, sorry, gearing system cost. Please read this again. All component for the new bicycle will be produced or purchased in Canvia, except for a gearing system component, which will be manufactured by Colvin company in Eurozone. The cost of acquiring this company from the Eurozone is already included in the pre-tax contribution. So the cost of this has already been included in the pre-tax contribution. That's why I haven't adapted it. Okay, what about the losses? You can carry forward the losses. You can carry forward the losses.
you can carry forward the losses. Now apply the taxes. If you carry forward the losses, next year profit will be lower, obviously. What will be next year profit? Adjusted. Tax. tax rate is 25% in, in that country. No tax. 25%. Add back the losses. Twenty five point six. Now add back this. Or Instead of doing this, you can solve in the, in the working. You can solve in the working. How? Let me explain. Calculate the profit here. This is A8. Losses carry forward. Now apply the tax. 25%. No tax here, tax will be applicable on net of these two. H7. So instead of writing here, Okay. Then add back the depreciation. Working capital change is given. That is. 25, 2.5, 2.8, 25, 2.5, 2.8, 3. Now, here calculate the sum of all these. 33.33. .33. What is the investment? Land and building is 75 and machinery is 700. So total it will be 70 plus 700. So it's 75 plus 700. So this will be outflow. Now in last year, there will be no value of the plant and machinery, but land and value will increase 30% in all of these four years. 75 into 1.3 raised to power. 
calculate the net cash flows sum add all cash flows so these are the net cash flows So the next step will be to write the exchange rate here. Current exchange rate is nine point nine one CL over euro. Can we a uh, inflation is ten percent? What is the eurozone inflation? What is the eurozone inflation? in first two year it is 4% then it is 2% and can we inflation is 10% throughout the period so let's write the exchange rate here you can do the calculation here exchange rate Nine point nine one. Nine point nine one. This is CL over euro. CL inflation is ten percent into one point one. Euro inflation is four percent. Into one point one divided by one point zero. Eleven point zero nine. And next year it will increase by ten percent. But eurozone inflation moved to two percent. Please calculate and confirm me. Please calculate and confirm. Now, above cash flows are in CL. Exchange rate is CL over euro. So, let's calculate the remittance. Remittance will be in euro. Please confirm. Okay. So, what will be the other cash flow? Do we have to pay additional tax, guys? Please read the scenario. Do we have to pay the additional tax? Do we have to pay the additional tax? No, because tax in our country is twenty percent. Okay. What what can be the other cash flow? Is there any royalty in this question? Is there any royalty? What are the parent company cash flows? Is there any royalty? Is there any additional tax? No additional tax, no royalty. Is there any contribution loss or contribution income? Anything? Please read the question and tell me 
Is there any parent company specific cash flow? Yes, there is one income for the component for the gearing system. How much you are earning? Please read the second last paragraph on which is appearing on the screen and tell me how much you are earning. How much you are earning, guys? So you are selling for 10 euro and your cost is 2 euro. So that means your profit will be 8 euro per component. So guys, first of all, write the components here. One oh nine seven two five. Components one oh nine seven two five one twenty one seven nine five One four eight five nine zero one nine seven six two four profit. Ten minus two into inflation one point zero four raised to power two. Raise to power one. And then after year three, it will increase with inflation of zero two. And obviously you have to round off in, into million to so divide by 1 million. Okay. Any question till now? This is H13. So move it to here. And we have to pay full tax on it. That is Now calculate the net cash loss. Okay. 
these are the net cash flows. Now calculate NPV at 16%, including the country risk premium. NPV, 16%. Select all cash flows and plus the initial investment. Okay, it is negative. NPV at 16% is negative. So, what about the NPV at 13%? If we discount at the original discount rate, Oh, it, it, it will be positive figure. It will be a positive figure. So what was the requirement, guys? Evaluate the suitability of the investment proposal in Canvia, including the impact of country risk premium on the NPV. So you will write your comments here. So what should be your comments, by the way? What should be your comments? Uh, it's very easy. Profit in first year is will increase by 4%. In second year, it will increase by 4 raised to power 2. In third year, I have increased the last with inflation of 2%. And fourth, I have increased the second last with an inflation of 2%. This will increase by 4% raised to power 1. This will increase by 4% raised to power 2. From year 3, inflation will change to 2%. So what I have done, I have taken the last figure 8.65 and increased by 2%. And then in fourth year, I have taken the 8.83 and increased it with 2%. Okay. So what will be our discussion? The CN of investing in Kenya depends upon discount rate if we use 16% discount rate which includes the impact of country risk premium NPV is negative and project is not what however if we discount discount at normal discount rate will be discounted at normal discount rate 13%. NPV is positive and Project is showing the reason for investment. 
there should be further investigation that which rate should be used to discount these cash flows okay right company should also considers that land return land value is increasing with 30 we we are doing this for uh, skepticism and commercial acumen land is increasing with 30% every year is it feasible in that country and disposal gain is tax exempt is this return is exempt of tax now or it will remain tax exempt in 4 years time and company should also evaluate how parent company will charge tax on this gain it is exempt in that country what about our country how much tax we will charge you will get marks on discussion on this part this part will give you the marks on analysis this para will give you the marks on skepticism and professional acumen okay what about the b part discuss the validity of the chief executive reason for adjusting the discount rate so we have to write both pros and cons on the chief executive reasons for adjust if executive reasons for adjusting this come guys can you tell me what will be the possible pros and cons of chief executive reasons colvin company is investing in a new project new project that has same business risk and same financial risk as capital structure will remain same 
So discount rate should be same as the existing 13%. Okay. That that was the that is that was basic point. However, CEO is suggesting that company that Colvin should use higher discount rate, higher discount rate to reflect the country risk premium of Canvia as Canvia is out of Eurozone and is not in a stable economic environment. environment. And this higher rate will reflect the political risk, exchange rate risk, and higher inflation risk of can be okay that's that's the these are the reasons right these are the reasons guys that's why he is using the higher rate However, CEO should also consider other points. And what are those other points? As company is investing in other country and diversifying its risk. This diversification will not get, will not create any benefit for institutional shareholders. This reduction will not create any benefit or risk for institutional shareholders because institutional shareholders will diversify their risk by themselves. And if Colvin company is investing in other country, the risk of that country can be offset by the favorable position of your own country and risk can be reduced. So standard deviation is not a suitable measure of risk. 
because it does not consider diversification benefits. How? For example, if in Kenya you are facing political risk, obviously in Euro there will be no risk. So risk of one country will offset against the favorable position of your country and your overall risk will reduce. So how can you say that you should always use the high discount rate? So you should write one favorable point and one point against the director. So you should write the pros and cons here. Okay. Okay, one thing more you can write here uh, higher discount rate suggested by CEO can be justified if all the markets move together. For example, if there is any economic issue for example, if any country if any country is facing any economic issue and all countries markets reflects reflect the impact of that issue in that case diversification will not create benefit and company should use higher discounted. Let, let, let me explain this, guys. For example, in 2008, what happened? American markets uh, they were American market faced the financial crisis in 2008. And American market faces the credit crunch. What happened, you know? All of the world market faces that issue. Look, in today's world, if China, only China closes its border, you know what happened? it will create a huge problem for the whole world. Why? Because China is trading with all of the world. You know, in recent time, only one country goes in a war with the Ukraine. Russia goes in a war with the Ukraine. What happened? All of the world market suffers because of that war. Because now the world is more integrated. So if you are saying that if you are moving to other country and other country, why you are moving to other country to get the diversification benefit? So other country adverse position will cancel out with your favorable position. That's why you should use the uh, same discount rate. You can write point against and uh, you, you can write a point against that that today's world is more integrated. So if you are investing in other country, diversification will not create any benefit. There is no benefit of diversification. Risk will not reduce. So that's why you should use a higher discount. So that's why I have write all the comments in a positive and a negative way, guys. It's my request. Whenever there is a question and exam, you should write some points in a favorable position, some points in a uh, 
uh, in against. So here, this director is suggesting that you should use the higher discount rate. First of all, you should write the points in favor of the director. Yes, director is right. We should use the higher discount rate because the higher discount rate reflects the political uh, instability of that country, exchange rate risk of that country, inflation of that country. Then you should write other points and against the director. Why we are using the higher discount rate when you are investing in other country, it will create the diversification benefits. So your risk will reduce. Second, if you're investing in other country, you are saying that risk is increasing. Risk reducing is the responsibility of the shareholder. And majority of the shareholders are institutional shareholders. They can diversify their own risk. So risk will, they, they can take care of the risk by you are using the higher discount. So I have written one or two points in favor of the director and one or two points in against of the director. Guys, you can use your own wording. You can use your own wording. Okay. Okay, now let's read the answer. This is a technical article written by the examiner. Read the mind of an AFM marker. Okay, I'm a member of the team who marks AFM. This article is designed to give you a the candidate and insight into my mind so that you can better understand what a market will be looking for when it comes to marking your script. Insight into a marker's thinking, appreciating what we are trained to look for, what we award marks for the reason why marks may not be awarded will help you fulfill your potential and gain the necessary marks to pass. It will help you to appreciate the points that will attract marks so that you can better assess your answers. So guys, this is for question number two. You just read these points. The 20 technical marks were split between two requirements. 14 marks for the calculation. 6 marks for the discussion for the B part. In calculation A, for part A, each part of the calculation will generally be awarded 1 or 2 marks depending on the complexity. A well-justified conclusion and discussion result will get you 2 marks. For the discussion element, each relevant point will generally be awarded 1 mark, although a well-discussed point can be attracted 2 marks. A good answer to part A would take a, a methodical approach with clear and easy to follow work. Good answer to part B would look to both reasons why the chief executive proposal might be valid and also why it may not be valid. Pros and cons, right? Professional marks would be obtained from producing answer which fully address the requirement. So this is candidate number one, B part. He has written the B part. Validity of the chief executive reason for adjusting the discount rate used in appraising the project in Canvia R. Use the VAC should be used for discounting the cash flows. However, a project specific cost of capital can be used if the business changes or the companies diversify into new sector. In Colvin case, the company is investing in another country which is developing economy. So the government rules and the financial institution will change from time to time. Furthermore, the inflation in the foreign country is higher than that of the Eurozone, which can lead to adverse effect on the country rates. However, the changes in government or the economic condition are systematic risks which cannot be eliminated or not the business risk. As a result, for an appropriate cost of capital firm should decide on the project specific way. So guys, he has written in a very basic way. Do you think it is a, it's, it's a best answer? Do you think it's a best answer? By the way, tell me. Let's have an open discussion. Do you think it's a best answer? Do you think it even halfly matches our answer. Do you think it is even halfly matches what I was suggesting that you should write the pros and cons? No, but how many marks he has obtained? Four marks. How many marks he has obtained? Four marks. Four marks. He has obtained four marks. This is the official, this, this sheet has officially marked by the examining team. So why you are worrying? Come on. When I was writing answer, you were worrying that how will we write that much complex answer? Why you are worrying? He, this candidate has got, uh, has got four marks. 
Okay, let's move to next one. Okay, this is working number one, text allowable depreciation. There is no need to write separately showing the working. You can show the working in the cell even. Land value. Okay, he has calculated land value incorrectly. He has calculated incorrectly the land value. Still got the mark. Working capital negative. Okay, transfer price, contribution. Contribution is right, I think. Sale units, contribution, tax allowable depreciation. And what, what happened? And last year, he has written 350 instead of 175. What about other working capital is okay. Amount in dollar instead of euro. Contribution earned. By the way, this contribution is right? No, I think that's not right. NPV is 68. Based on positive NPV project can be undertaken. Oh my God. Okay. So they, these are the scores. He is still able to got 16 out of 25. Come on. And you are worrying that how we will pass this exam, blah, blah. Sir, we need motivation. This candidate got 16 out of 25. By the way, he, he has passed this question. He has obtained three uh, analysis, professional marks even. So read this. For analysis and evaluation, there has been a good use of data to determine suitable calculation. So if you do the suitable calculation, you will get the marks and analysis. And good use of the data for draw appropriate conclusion, although not much support for discussion. In this instance, this answer should obtain three marks for analysis. For skepticism and commercial acumen, there is no real focus on either of these skills in the answer. So there are no marks awarded for the, these skills. Mark for these skills could have been awarded if the answer had used scenario information to make commercial points. If the view of the senior management had been challenged regarding the discount rate. Okay. Let's move to candidate number two. The NPV comes out at negative 21.6 million euro. Given the negative nature, the outcome should not be, the project should not be accepted. A key driver, this was the offering inflation rate with Canvia consistently at 10% higher rate. This means the amount of money received by Calvian reduced. By including the risk premium from 13 to 16, NPV is lower. So this candidate was better. At least he has explained the Calculation. So that's why he got one number. But in B part, he has produced a very poor answer. Due to the uncertainty in the Canvia market, it may be prudent to introduce the risk premium. Still got the two number. While it is true that Canvia is developing a pair and appears economically less stable, it has got 10% inflation. This shows strong growth in the market. And given that it is expected to stay at 10%, it shows some stability. <laughs> what he is writing. <laughs> That's why he, he has not get any number. He has not got any number by writing this statement. Candidate's indices does provide a sound reasoning for risk premium. So it shows the likelihood of adverse result in this mark. Still, still he got two marks. Okay. So on text, he has got number. Landed building was okay. NPV was 21.6. NPV is is wrong. These are the land and building value, sales volume, exchange rate. Okay. He's still able to pass 14 out of 25. 
for analysis he he obtained four marks commercial acumen number only one mark in part b one mark one mark for commercial acumen one mark for part b for analysis and evaluation there have been a good use of the data to determine suitable calculation so if you do the suitable calculation well although this candidate has wrongly calculated the npp but he has uh, shown some skills to calculate the data so that's why he got four marks in analysis and good use of the data to draw an appropriate conclusion he has written two lines only only two lines in the calculation two to three lines and he has got four marks and what about our answer we have fully explained inshallah if if you do uh, if you fully explained and if you write the pros and cons of the theory you will get full marks for skepticism there is no royal focus on the skepticism in this answer no challenge of the view of the senior management so there are no marks awarded for this skill in terms of the commercial acumen there are examples of using the scenario information to make commercial points all together this shows some demonstration of the skill so get one mark and what about the third candidate this is a number 3 candidate b part this, this would be the most poor answer i think as colvin company wants to use mix of debt and equity both these components have different risk as can be as a developing economy it may be more sensitive to the inflation changes hence interest would increase what would make debt borrowing more expensive on that basis it makes sense to adjust vag use for project appraisal still get one mark i don't know why but still he get one mark okay he has done a uh, good calculation calculation is right contribution taxable depreciation he didn't directed the fixed cost working capital oh my god working capital calculation is wrong but still he get the number here why because he has deducted the calculation in first three years and added in the last year although this is wrong but still he get the number contribution on part okay npv 620 exchange rate exchange rate is right i think so exchange rate okay exchange rate even exchange rate is wrong in year 3 and year 4 you, he must have used 2% he has used 4% okay he still still able to get 8 marks 2 marks in the analysis 5 part in the a if he done the numerical well he must have passed this question for analysis evaluation there has been a good use of the data to determine suitable calculation although no use of the data to show an appropriate conclusion lack of support for the discussion obtain two marks for the analysis skepticism and commercial acumen there is no real use so there is no marks so what you have learned if you do the calculation well if you proper label the calculation you can get full marks and if you able to uh, discuss the result of the calculation you will get professional marks of analysis and if you whenever you write the theory you should write the pros and cons you will get full marks uh, of the theory and even the commercial uh, sorry uh, even the professional skills so guys this document has been produced by the member of the examining team these are the three papers which have been generated by which have been produced by some candidates and our examiner our examining team has tested these three candidates you can produce much better answer compared to these three candidates